Evet herkese merhaba. Şimdi bugün bir sonraki konuya geçiyoruz. Daha farklı bir konuya geçiyoruz. Fizyoloji konularını şimdilik bitiriyoruz. Çünkü önümüzdeki yıllarda fizyoloji dersiniz var ayrıca. O derslerde göreceksiniz. O nedenle önümüzdeki yıllar göreceğiniz dersleri daha iyi anlayabilmeniz için bugün ve önümüzdeki iki haftada evrim konularını göreceğiz. Şimdi bugün sadece evrimsel kavramlardan bahsedeceğiz. Evrimle ilgili bir takım kavramlardan bahsedeceğiz. Önümüzdeki derste yani gelecek hafta önce biraz popülasyon genetiğine bakacağız. Popülasyon genetiği hakkında biraz bilgi sahibi olduktan sonra da evrim hakkında biraz daha fazla şey öğrenmiş olacağız. Evet. Today we are going to start with what evolution is, what the evolutionary mechanisms are and how evolution idea has started. Actually modern evolution idea because I don't want to talk about history of evolution too much. <coughs> uh, let's get started. Uh, descent with modification. That's actually how the uh, evolution, how evolution was described by Darwin. So Darwinian view of life. Today's chapter's uh, name. Endless form, most beautiful. A new area of era of uh, biology began in 1859 when Charles Darwin published his book, the book, uh, his book, The Origin of Species. The, orig the origin of species focused biologists' attention on the great diversity of organisms. So, in, the, in our previous lectures, we talked about the diversity in organisms, in diversity of living organisms a lot. So, today we are going to try to uh, find an answer to the question, what the reason for this diversity? Darwin noted that current species, current species are descendants of ancestral species. Evolution can be defined by Darwin's first descent with modification. Evolution, evolution can be viewed as both a pattern and a process. So evolution is pattern and process, both. The Darwinian revolution challenged the traditional view of a young earth inhabited, inhabited unchanging species. So Darwin's ideas had deep historical roots. So the evolution idea didn't start just with Darwin. Before Darwin, the idea was already exist. <coughs> uh, from your book, I suggest you to uh, investigate this table, this figure, uh, what was the ideas before Darwin and how Darwin helped The, how, how Darwin organized the idea of evolution. Scala natura and classification of species. We already uh, worked on uh, classification of animals. Uh, the Greek philosopher Aristotle weaved species as fixed and arranged them on a scala natura. Linne interrupted organismal Uh, adaptations as evidence that the creator had designed each species for a specific purpose. Linne uh, and Carl Linne, uh, Linne was uh, founder of tax taxonomy, you should remember him, the branch of biology concerned with classifying organisms. He developed the binomial nomenclature or binomial format for naming species, for example, Homo sapiens, Escherichia coli, or both towers. We, I gave you the uh, examples already, so you should remember these examples from our uh, previous lectures. Uh, an important point to understand the evolution is fossils. Uh, the study of fossils help to lie the groundwork for Darwin, Darwin's ideas. So fossils are remains or traces of organisms from the past usually found in sedimentary rock which appears in layers of strata. Uh, we have a picture here. 
uh, sorry, uh, we have a video here. If you look at <coughs> the rocks here, you can see them as layers. All those layers are called strata or each called stratum. And between these layers, there are remnants of the organisms previously lived. Those are called fossils. Paleontology is the study of fossils. Uh, it was largely developed by a French scientist who is called Cuvier. Uh, I'm gonna pass these a little bit. Let me see what there are. Because I want to talk about the mechanisms more. So there's principle of uniformitarianism states the mechanisms of change are constant over time. The views strongly influence Darwin's thinking. Okay, uh, let's look at that. The geologists James Sutton and Lair, Lil, sorry, uh, perceived that changes in Earth surface can result from slow continuous actions still operating today. So uh, what we have to understand from this is the surface of Earth is not stable. It changes over time. And this view strongly influenced Darwin. Uh, before Darwin, Darwin uh, Lamarck hypothesized evolution uh, and he hypothesized that Species evolved through use and disuse of body parts and the inheritance of acquired characteristics. The mechanisms he per the mechanism he per he per uh, proposed was unsupported by evidence. But this had with modification by natural selection is the Darwin's idea that explains the adaptations of organisms and the unity and diversity of life. So these are what we have to explain with evolution or these are what, ex what evolution explains. Descent with modification by natural selection. And uh, Darwin's idea, Darwin explained descent with modification by natural selection, adaptations of organisms, unity and diversity of life. So, unity and diversity of life, one. Adaptations of organisms to their environment, two. Descent with modifications by natural selection, three. Some doubt about permanence of species preceded Darwin's ideas. So, what was Darwin's background and what did he learn and what did he do? As a boy and uh, into adulthood, Darwin had a consuming interest in nature. He first studies, he first studied medicine, but he was unsuccessful about that, and then theology at Cambridge University. After graduating, he took an unpaid position as naturalist in a companion to Captain Robert Fitzroy for a five year around the world voyage on the sheep Beagle. During his travels on Beagle, Darwin collected specimens of South American plants and animals. He observed that fossils resembled living species from the same region and living species resemble other species from nearby regions. Darwin explained, <coughs> explained uh, sorry, experienced an earthquake in Chile and he observed the uplift of rocks. Darwin was influenced by Lille's principles of geology and thought that the Earth was more than 6,000 years old. His interest in geography, distribu geographic distributions of uh, species, was kindled by a stop at Galapagos Islands. He hypothesized that species from South America had colonized the, Galapago, uh, colonized the Galapagos Islands and speciated on the islands. So in this video you can see a view from Galapagos Islands.
these are birds from Galapagos Islands. And these are some mammals from the same island and birds. All these species live together in the same environment. Uh, let's do something here. All right. Darwin's focus on adaptation. There is another thing uh, which we have to concern about uh, when we are talking about evolution, adaptation. In reasoning, in recessing his observations, Darwin perceived adaptation to the environment and the origin of new species as closely related process. From studies made years after Darwin's voyage, biologists have conducted that this is what happened to Galap Galapagos finches. So Galapagos finches are uh, groups of birds Darwin was especially uh, worked on. Uh, hold on a second, please. I would like to check something from YouTube. Yes, this voice is on on YouTube. Then we can go on. These are uh, different species of birds that he worked on. Uh, please uh, note what they eat and the shapes of uh, their goggles. In 1844, Darwin wrote an essay on natural selection as the mechanism of descent with modification, but did not introduce his theory publicly. Natural selection is a process in which individuals with favorable inherited traits are more likely to survive and reproduce. So this sentence is important. Uh, we will uh, see more descriptions, more definitions about natural selection. This is the one of them. This is one of them. In June 1958, Darwin received a manuscript from Wallace, who had developed a theory of natural selection similar to Darwin's. So Darwin was not only one person to think about natural selection. Darwin quickly finished Origin of Species and published, in, published it in the next year. Darwin explained three broad, obs, broad observations. The unity of life, diversity of life, and the match between organisms and their environment, which we call today adaptation. Darwin never used the word evolution in the first edition of Origin of Species. He first descent with modification summarized Darwin's perception of the unity of life. The first refers to the view that all organisms are related through descent from an ancestor that live in the remote past. In the Darwinian view, the history of life is like a tree which bra with branches representing life's diversity. Darwin's theory matched well, matched well with the hierarchy, hierarchy of Linne. So actually, this is directly uh, drawing of Darwin. So he uh, proposed evolution, a tree of life with branches. So today uh, we can see the same structure in the tree of life, in the tree of life, or the phylo phylo uh, phylogenetic trees. To understand the natural selection, first we have to look at artificial selection, which is done by humans, which can be applied by people. Darwin noted that humans have modified other species by selecting and breeding individuals with desired traits, a process called artificial selection. Darwin drew two inferences from two observations. So this is example for uh, artificial selection 
from wild mustard, uh, the people can produce different groups of plants, which we use uh, for agriculture. The first observation was members of a population often vary in their inherited traits, like this. So, when you look at these bugs carefully, you can see there are differences in their colors, there are differences in the uh, size of their, uh, their spots and difference in, their, in the number of their spots. So, these are all, this is variation in the population. Observation 2. All species can produce more offspring then the environment can support and many of these offspring fail to survive and reproduce. Inference 1. Individuals who, whose inherited traits give them a higher probability of surviving and reproducing in a given environment tend to leave more offspring than, the other, than other individuals. Inference 2. This unequal ability of individuals to survive and reproduce will lead to accumulation of favorable traits in the population over generations. Darwin was influenced by Thomas Malthus, who noted the potential for human populations to increase faster than food supplies and other resources. If some heritable traits are advantageous, these will accumulate in a population over time and this will increase the frequency of individuals with these traits. This process explains the match between organisms and their environment. So if we summarize the natural selection, individuals with certain heritable characteristics survive and reproduce at higher rates than other individuals. So, some individuals reproduce in a higher rate than the others. Natural selection increases the adaptation of organisms to their environment over time. If an environment changes over time, natural selection may result in adaptation to these new conditions and may give rise to new species. Note that Individuals do not evolve, populations evolve over time. This is one of the most important things you have to remember always. Never forget. Individuals do not evolve, population evolves. Natural selection can only increase or decrease heritable traits that vary in population. Adaptations vary with different environments. Evolution is supported by an overwhelming amount of scientific evidence that new, discover new discoveries continue to fill the gaps identified by Darwin in Origin of Species. Uh, two examples provide evidence for natural selection. Natural selection in response to introduced plant species and the evolution of drug-resistant bacteria. These are two important examples. Natural selection in response to introduced plant species. Sopberry bugs use their beak to feed on seeds with, within fruits. In southern Florida, sopberry bugs feed on balloon wine, wine with larger fruits. They have longer beaks. In central Florida, they feed on Golden rain tree with smaller fruit, they have shorter beaks. Correlation between fruit size and beak size has also been observed in Louisiana, Oklahoma and Australia. In all cases, beak size has evolved in populations that feed on introduced plants with fruits that are smaller or longer or larger than the native fruits. These cases are examples of evolution by natural selection. In Florida, this evolution in big size occurred in less than 35 years. All right, this is our soapberry bug. 
and in this picture in your book campus biology uh, you can see these figures and investigate the graphs about beak size the evolution of drug resistant bacteria this is a second uh, example which is a very important example again the bacterium staphylococcus aureus is commonly found in on people one strain methicillin resistant methicillin resistant uh, mrsa is a dangerous pathogen and staphylococcus become became resistant to penicillin in 1945 two years after it was first widely used. Staphylococcus became resistant to methicillin in 1965, sorry, 1961, two years after it was first widely used too. Methicillin works by inhibiting a protein used by bacteria in their cell walls. MRSA bacteria use a different protein in their cell walls. When exposed to methicillin, MRSA strains are more likely to survive and reproduce than non-resistant Staphylococcus strains. MRSA strains are now resistant to many antibiotics. Natural selection does not create new traits, but it edits or selects for traits already present in the population. The local environment determines which traits will be selected for or selected against in any specific population. Okay, so we have two important terms again, to be selected for or to be selected against. If the nature forces you to be alive, that means you are selected for. If the organism's survival in an environment is more difficult than the others, then that is selected against. Another term, homology. Homology is similarity resulting from common ancestry. Anatomical and molecular homologies. Homologous structures are anatomical resemblance that represent variations on a structural theme present in a common ancestor. All right, in this picture, you can see homologous structure. Even though they look different, actually, they are similar when you look at their anatomical structures. Human's arm, cat's front legs, and the structures in whale and bat. If you count the numbers of bones, you will see all similar numbers. This is called homology. Comparative embryology reveals anatomical homologies not visible in adult organisms. Vestigial structures are remnants of features that served important functions in the organism's ancestors. Examples of homologies at the molecular level are genes shared among organisms inherited from a common ancestor. Evolutionary trees are hypothesized about hypotheses about the relationships among different groups. Homologies from nested patterns in evolutionary trees. Evolutionary trees can be made using different types of data, for example, anatomical and DNA sequence data. Alright, in this picture you can see uh, an evolutionary tree or phylogenetic tree, which relates different uh, organisms, or which relates organisms from different species to each other. A different cause of resemblance, convergent evolution. Convergent evolution is the evolution of similar or analogous features in distantly related groups.
Analogous traits arise when, group independently, when groups independently adapt to similar environments in similar ways. Convergent evolution does not provide information about ancestry. The fossil records provide evidences for the extinction of species, the origin of new groups and changes within groups over time. Fossils can be document or fossils can document important transitions, for example the transition from land to sea in the ancestors of uh, Cestacians, like this. Biogeography is another uh, branch of science which supports the evolution. Biogeography, the geographic distribution of species, provides evidence for evolution. Earth's continents were, formerly, were formerly united in a single large continent called Pangaea, but it, but uh, they have since separated by continental drift. An understanding of continental movement and modern distribution of species allows us to predict when and where different groups evolved. Endemic species are species that are not found anywhere else in the world. Islands have many endemic species that are often closely related to species on the nearest mainland or island. Darwin explained that species on islands gave rise to new species as they adapted to new environments. What is theoretical about Darwin's view of life? In science, a theory accounts for many observations and data and attempts to explain and integrate a great variety of phenomena. Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection integrates diverse areas of biological study and stimulates many new research questions. Ongoing research adds to our understanding of evolution. Observations Individuals in a population vary in their heritable characteristics. And the second observation, organisms produce more offspring than the environment can support. <coughs> Inferences, individuals that are well suited to their environment tend to leave more offspring than other individuals. And over time, favorable traits accumulate in the population. So this table is important. Please learn this and inspect this carefully. Okay, is there any questions? Evet, buraya kadar soru var mı? Eğer yoksa bir ara vereceğiz. Ondan sonra aradan sonra devam edeceğiz. Evet, YouTube'a bakıyorum. Soru var mı diye. Evet, YouTube'da da soru yok. Peki o zaman 10 dakika ara veriyoruz. 10 dakika sonra tekrar buradayız. Youtube'dan e, yayını şimdilik durduruyorum. 10 dakika sonra tekrar yeni bir yayın başlatacağım. E, önce İngilizce anlatmayı bitirip arkasından e, bir de Türkçe anlatmayı düşünüyorum. Şimdilik görüşmek üzere.